In an unexpected turn of events, Tucker Carlson, a well-known conservative pundit, takes the stage at a Kid Rock concert to deliver a thought-provoking speech delving into the current state of the nation. Initially disheartened by the barrage of negative headlines flooding the internet, Carlson's mood shifts as he immerses himself in the vibrant atmosphere of the concert crowd and the quintessential American spirit pulsating through rural communities. His words serve as a poignant reminder of the stark dichotomy between the bleak narratives portrayed online and the genuine human connection experienced offline, striking a chord with those disillusioned by the media's portrayal of reality. Don't miss, what was the speaker's main message about the country's perception? How did the speaker's interactions with people in Gonzalez influence his perspective? What themes did the speech emphasize regarding patriotism and freedom? I feel welcome, thank you! <laughs> you, you may be asking, what am I doing here? And you know, I don't really know. <laughs> Thank you. So, I wound up here tonight because I was having dinner at my house with Kid Rock. And a few months ago, and he said, and I think he likes my house because you can smoke in my house. Uh, <laughs> but he said, you know, you should, you should come and open for me on my summer tour. And I said, well, I'm honored, of course, but I don't play an instrument. Actually, I'm an unemployed talk show host, so what would I do at <laughs> your show? <laughs> and he said, and I'm quoting now, you will figure it out, and you will like it. So that was two months ago, and I woke up this morning and I thought, I gotta go to Gonzales, Louisiana. And, oh yeah! And open up for Kid Rock, what am I gonna say? And I had no idea until I got here, and you know what changed my mind? I woke up this morning, and maybe you have this experience. I woke up this morning and I went on the internet, Familiar? And I read all these stories and I thought to myself, this is the most depressing thing that's happened to me in a long time. This country is fucked up. That's what I thought. I did think that. Which is a sad thing to think when you're in bed. And I looked over at my wife and my four dogs and I thought, whoo, I feel a little depressed. Who? I feel a little depressed. Recognizing a state of melancholy involves recognizing the overall journey of encountering emotional challenges, irrespective of one's apparent triumphs, showcasing openness and understanding. And then I got here and I walked through the crowd and I thought, no, <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> the country they tell me about on the internet is fucked up. The country that I experience when I walk through this crowd or when I wake up in my town of a hundred people in a rural area is a beautiful country. <laughs> Filled with beautiful people. No, no it's not. The country they tell me about on the internet is messed up. The country that I experience when I walk through this crowd or when I wake up in my town of a 100 people in a rural area is a beautiful country filled with beautiful people. In a world where the media thrives on negativity, it's refreshing to delve into the tapestry of positivity woven through real-life experiences. This narrative boldly challenges pessimism, embracing the intrinsic goodness found within the United States and its people. I, w I walk, I'm standing here and I look out and I see this structure, I don't know if you can see it, it's a lighting rig, but it's got a familiar shape to it. A shape I like. And I said, I want to go see the cross. So I walked out to the cross, and as I'm walking out, this chick gets right in my face. She's got two nose rings, a cross necklace, and a Trump bracelet. And, and she looks at me right in the face, and she goes, ah! <laughs> and she said, I love you. And I said, I love you too. And I meant it. And she said, I love you, and I said, I love you too, and I meant it. 
In this exchange, a poignant and authentic connection blooms between the orator and the gathered listeners, forming a poignant testament to our shared humanity and affection that surmounts any political disparities, bringing together people across America. And I thought, that's the America that I know. <laughs> Little weird, slightly crazy, full of love, and beautiful. A little weird, slightly crazy, full of love and beautiful in the tapestry of American identity, woven with threads of unity and love, lies the quintessence of its spirit, a mosaic celebrating both its distinctiveness and diversity across the nation, binding its populace in a common embrace. And that describes the man I'm here to introduce. Yes, it does. If you could take one person out of this nation of 350 million people and present it to the rest of the world and say, what's, what's a real American look like? I would say, I would say that American would be both disobedient, but decent. That American would both give you the finger and burst out laughing at the same time. That American would both give you the finger and burst out laughing at the same time. Amidst the tapestry of American identity, woven with threads of humor and resilience, lies a profound comprehension of our intricate nature. We embrace rebellion, embodying its spirit while embracing its myriad expressions, all while holding steadfast to a positive outlook. <laughs> That's right. These two men have a lot in common. <laughs> well, I, I, ha I have the feeling that your, I have the feeling that your wish will be granted. But enough of me talking. It is time to celebrate. Now I know that many of you are not from Gonzales, which has a population I checked of twelve thousand people. There are more than twice that number here. So you came long distances and you spent quite a bit of your money to get here. But it was worth it. Because can you put a price on living free in the last free country? So let me tell you, my fellow Americans, what we've got. So let me tell you, my fellow Americans, what we've got. Illustrating the essence of camaraderie and shared empathy within the American populace, a unifying sense of identity and mission that surpasses individual distinctions. All gathered here tonight, a free people, united by our love of country and under God, We've all gathered here tonight, a free people, united by our love of country and under God. It champions the fundamental ideals of liberty, devotion to one's nation, and unwavering belief, forging a bond of unity and kinship among diverse members of the American populace. And in the name of that country and that God, we're here to celebrate a party that will not stop. And in the name of that country and that God, we're here to celebrate a party that will not stop. At its core, it champions resilience and optimism, embodying a readiness to embrace American values and traditions amidst adversity or hurdles. <laughs> and so, as I know you can, please be as noisy and disobedient as possible for Kid Fucking Rock. In an unexpected turn of events, Tucker Carlson took to the stage at a Kid Rock concert, delivering a spontaneous speech that offered a fresh perspective on the American journey. Despite commencing his day with a heavy heart, fueled by the disheartening narratives of online news sources, Carlson's encounter with the lively concert crowd sparked a newfound sense of hope in the resilience and warmth of the American people. By underscoring the gaping chasm between the narratives spun on the internet and the palpable realities of everyday life, Carlson struck a deep chord with audiences hungry for authenticity amidst the cacophony of modern media. 
His resolute message of defiance and jubilation resonated deeply with those who hold dear the ideals of freedom and the indomitable spirit of America, rendering his impromptu appearance a poignant and unforgettable moment of unity and patriotism. In a poignant reflection, Tucker Carlson juxtaposed the prevalent negative depictions of the United States found in online media with his personal encounters, highlighting a conservative viewpoint that prizes genuineness and tangible interactions over the abstract narratives propagated on the Internet. Carlson recounted a transformative experience of awakening in a rustic village where he felt an undeniable kinship with the local community, underscoring the significance of individual narratives within the broader tapestry of community and heritage and the enduring influence of traditional values on national identity. Expressing admiration for the rich tapestry of American society, Carlson characterized it as imbued with boundless affection, despite its multifaceted nature and inherent disparities, while also acknowledging the intricate resilience of the human psyche amidst societal tribulations. Asserting the paramountcy of liberty and assimilation as quintessential American ideals, Carlson lauded his audience for their collective identity as emancipated citizens under divine providence, advocating for both individual autonomy and communal solidarity rooted in shared ancestry and a unifying purpose. Furthermore, Carlson portrayed the archetypal American as simultaneously rebellious and dignified, encapsulating the tension between personal freedom and societal obligations, while recognizing the nuanced complexities of human nature and the imperative of individuals to honor their ethical responsibilities alongside their quest for personal liberty. What do you think?